Jock working the baseline, trying to get free. There's Peter Jock, the Big Ten's leading scorer. That's who they wanted to have it. Bohannon for the lead. Yes! Two-point lead for the Hawkeyes. Let's see what we get here. To the rim. Koenig. No. There with the rebound. And Iowa has come into Madison and Look stolen at him. it. Look at him. With four seconds left. And go into over second overtime. If well, you four seconds. Gasell and no chance. <laughs> it's good. It is good. They'll review it, but it beat the clock. Goodberry's trying to grab the ball and throw it in bounds. And Mitchell intercepts it and bounces it off his mouth. What a crossover and a hammer! Gazelle, boy, you talk about something that can light the fuse. That might be it. He's 6'2", and he flew like he was 6'9". Play, and the Hawkeyes with the crowd behind them. Here's the first jumper of the night by Gaines, and he swishes it, and he doesn't need a lot of room to work. Going with Evans against White. That time it was against McKay. Very comfortable. Another one. Make that nine. And drain it. Rebound tipped several times, controlled by the Hawkeyes. Right back to Gatons. He'll shoot another three and hits another one. That's ten in a row for him. Oh. Ten straight threes over two games. Surely they've gone a little bit cold. Oh. And caught that one. He'll go to the line as well. <laughs> what a half Gatons is having. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Here's Gatons the catch, the shot. Got it! That is 11 consecutive three-pointers made for Matt Gatons. He's just too clever. He sees things too easily. Gatons swishes in another one and falls right into his bench. Another three-pointer. I think he hit his head on someone's chair. He has 21. And even when you're knocking him out, you can't keep him from nailing a three. Dosser getting physical with Gatons. Pushes him off into the corner. Shot clock at six. Gatons will lift one up there. He bails another one. <laughs> 11 for 15 shooting overall. He catches, shoots another. This is unbelievable. He's a three. He banks it in. It will count at the buzzer. And they rush the floor here as Iowa, for the second time this season, has knocked off Wisconsin. And that's their fourth win over a top 25, led by Matt Gatons, who winds up the ball game with 33 points. Their first sweep of Wisconsin since 94-95. Yeah, and they did it all day. 20 for Iowa. I'm going to be very surprised if he doesn't get the basketball here. Seven to shoot. Now the clock is stopped. Utah buries it, and Iowa leads by two. 6.1 to play, and a timeout call. Three-point game again, a minute 35 to go. Hook another touch. Bohannon a three. Got it. Man, what great offense. Finds Garza. Bohannon the force. And he got it. Unbelievable. He's tying with a three. Here's McCaffrey. Now Bohannon for three. Got it. Bohannon. Not there. And Garza, the offensive board. Bohannon again. Bohannon. Shot clock at 10. Knocked away by Morgan. Bohannon gets it. Launches the three. And hits again. So seven seconds on the shot clock. They get it into the hands of Bohannon. Bohannon for three. Yes! One second difference. Shot clock and game clock right now. Jock from the corner. Hits a three! by Frazier to deny Frederick. McCaffrey hands it to Garza. He's three. Dagger from Luca Garza. Felice gives it to Bishanishvili. He misses what essentially was an open layup. Up ahead to Wieskamp. Are putting it away. 
Bohannon hitting the three. Big time shot. And a timeout taken by Fran McCaffrey. A bucket here, and things will really start to get interesting. Bohannon got it. Wieskamp, baseline drive, one possession game. Iowa can tie with a three. Moss instead wants two, and he's got him. Such a good drive by Isaiah Moss. Got the first. To Bohannon for the win. Got it. Still point three on the clock. Switch this up when the ball comes in. Nope, they stay man-to-man. -man. Better opportunity to drive if you're Rutgers. Here's Baker with eight. Pulls up for three. Ryan with three seconds left. 3.3 on the clock. A baseball pass. Tip. Uh -oh. Caught. Just saw. We need your support right now. Bohannon. He's got Brooks on him. He draws the foul. Count that. And he draws the foul on Nysir Brooks, which will be his fourth. So runs into the double team. Bohannon with the left hand. Kicks it in the corner. That's Wieskamp. Got it. Here comes Bohannon. Almost got away with a carry. And off the window, he answers with a runner of his own, Jordan Bohannon. You need to make sure you keep the patience, not only for the clock, but for foul, foul trouble as well. They've had 10 threes in the second half. Make it 11! Wieskamp! Bohannon turns a corner. To the rim he goes, and he's fouled and counted! Jordan Bohannon, a chance at three! Again, two possession game. Nice work. Bohannon, the touch pass. Then up ahead. Here's Bear. And with an exclamation point. The Iowa Hawkeyes making it a perfect run for the Big Ten. 6-0 is the Big Ten as Iowa advances to the second round. That, uh, that he is. It sends a great message to your teammates as well. It's not just about basketball. There he is. Right on cue. They've never been behind by this much. Ten the previous high. Bear. And Barrett. East camp. Ball fake and a three. Oh, the fake is open despite the snow outside in Iowa. There's the duck down. Livers. No rush. Don't need it. of the floor. I've been in this business too long. <laughs> Take a look, listen, and enjoy right now. And How that, fitting. Yeah. How yeah. fitting. Yeah. Listen to this. 20 to play right now. Tie game at 55. Gazelle will try and drive. Right of the lane. Shot. Good and a foul. Isaiah Hicks fouled him. 10 seconds to play. Jackson looking for help. Gives it to Page. He'll fire up a three. Off the front rim, three seconds. Woodbury with the rebound, and he takes a timeout with 1.7 to go. And Carolina, for just the fourth time under Roy Williams, has lost at home to a non-conference opponent. Iowa had the lead for over 39 minutes in this game, thanks in large part to the play of Nicholas Bear. The walk-on trying to earn a scholarship in a three-game stretch. Knocks down the three-pointer there. And then check it out. Last guy in the backcourt hustling all the way down to block Matt McQuaid's three-point attempt. And then getting the loose change and throwing down. Bear would finish in double digits, double digits for the third straight game with 11. Iowa up by 12, under 10 to go in the half. Peter Jock off the screen. Iowa up 37-23 at the break. Early second half. Hawkeyes still up by 11 off the inbounds. This is the way the night went for Michigan State. Alvin Ellis, the tip, own goal, soccer term. Hawkeyes lead by 13, just wasn't the Spartans' night. 
It was, however, a career night for Mike Gazelle. All the right places at all the right times. Career high 25, that three-point play, putting the Hawks up by 15. And then off the Jared Utah miss. It's Bear, the rebound, easy jumper. Hawkeye starting to pull away. And then Jock would swing for back-to-back -back triples. So versatile, moving it inside, outside. One of the important pieces to this Hawkeye puzzle, a puzzle that puzzled Michigan State all night long. Iowa goes up by 19. They would go on to win this one by 13, 83 to 70. And you know it, anytime you beat a number one team, when it's the first time such an event has happened since 1999's victory over UConn, you are going to have a court storm. First half was all boilers. They led by as many as 19. Vince Edwards there. It was a 17-point lead at the half. And in the second half, Iowa turns things around in a big way. Anthony Clemens knocks down the three. It is a nine-point game. And then Purdue, the lead down to three. Iowa went to this trapping zone pressure, and it gets to Purdue there. P.J. Thompson calls what was the last timeout for Purdue. Matt Painter argued they hadn't called it, but in fact they did. And so Purdue went the rest of the way without a timeout. Jared Utoff in 25 has been in double figures every game this year. He had 16 of their 20 in the first half. Got some help in the second, though. Dom Ewell. And Iowa comes all the way back to take the lead at 48-46. Johnny Hill through the lane and throwing down the dunk. Purdue within three, but Utah and the Hawkeyes had all the answers. Sweet move in the fingertip roll, the lead back to five. And then it's Mike Gassell to Nicholas Bear. How about that comeback? Fran McCaffrey afterwards with Steve Bardo. You know, team faces adversity. Well, this team certainly responded well, and they responded with energy. That's what got them going in the first half. Turnover, and that leads to a Peter Jock three. Gavin Schilling with another turnover thrown out of bounds. Bryn Forbes called for charging on the break. Aaron Harris losing the ball gives it away to Peter Jock, who finishes. Jock had 19 points in the first half. Tom Izzo can't watch. Oh, that's painful. 16 that's painful. turnovers on the day. Here's Valentine. 200 career threes made for him. Spartans still down 15. Still in the first half, more from Jock. How about this stat? Iowa hit more threes in the first half than Michigan State had field goals. Yeah, there's some things that are hard to believe. That's one of them. Whew. That's one of them. 47 to 25. Tom Izzo and company had work to do in the second half. But Jared Utah, Utah, give me three. Hawkeyes up 21. Mike Gazelle to Jock. The long two. And the Hawkeyes roll to a victory. Four fouls. This possession and Tyler Cook yeah. just stop. Okay. Wow. And down. Oh, wow. Up to 120th this year. Here's Garza spinning in over Ricky. Oh, Tyler Cook throws it back down with one hand. Watch Go. out. Look out. Oh, wow. Bohannon on Muhammad Ali Abdur Rahman. Beautiful drive and stuff for the Hawkeyes to open. And my goodness, what a finish from Cook. Have a little bit of a larger margin for error once you had the new year and the exclusive conference play. Hello, Tyler Cook. It's a 9 0 Iowa run. Garza. Down inside to Cook. Count it with a dunk. They usually don't go down that easy. Here's Cook all alone. Cook with the hammer on the baseline. Timeout, Illinois. Assist guy can score, can rebound. He just doesn't sell popcorn at halftime. Oh, Tyler Cook. Wow. Tyler Cook. Here comes. Oh, my good Point game. It's not about to get the best shot. Oh, bam! My goodness, what a find! And Cook to finish! Well, batted free, picked up by Bohannon. Three on one. Cook! Oh, my goodness! And the foul! Woo. 
<laughs> Hawkeyes. Bohannon finds Cook. Cook on his way in. <laughs> Cook driving kick. Back in for the slam. Ball reversal. Cook active. Ball goes inside. Good offense for Iowa. It's that simple. Didn't pay off for the Gophers that time. Here's Moss Allium to Cook. The rebound to Nicholas Bear. There's Cook against Copeland, and how about that finish from the sophomore? It was more than sportsmanship on display over the weekend in Hawkeye Nation. It was an act of honor and respect. Sophomore point guard Jordan Bohannon with a chance to break the school record of 34 free throws in a row. Instead, he pointed to the sky and then purposely missed the shot. And he does miss it. You see, Jordan didn't want to break the record set by Chris Street, an Iowa basketball legend, three days before he was killed in a car accident 25 years ago. Jordan was determined not to eclipse Chris's legacy. It wasn't my record to have. Chris's parents were there cheering on Jordan and were stunned when the shot fell short. He doesn't want to break somebody else's record, but that just says what kind of a heart he has. A kind heart guiding Jordan's display of uncommon selflessness. Obviously, that record deserves to stay in his name. The Hawkeyes won their game, and the hearts of fans who share Jordan Bohannon's belief that life is bigger than basketball.